Member of Ukrainian Parliament Valentin Nalivaychenko believes that Russians will not support the introduction of martial law and mobilization and will surrender to the Ukrainian armed forces en masse. He expressed this opinion on Espresso TV. Now the Russians have announced a counter-terrorist operation in three regions, Kursk, Bryansk and Belgorod. They announce such operations because they cannot protect their own citizens in their country. Putin and his entourage are always bluffing when they say they will use much more powerful weapons than they use on the battlefield, Nalivaychenko explained. He added that no matter what Putin and his entourage do now, the situation will only get worse. If martial law is introduced in Russia, Putin will be forced to announce mobilization. However, he cannot do this. In the Kursk region, during our operation, numerous Russian conscripts immediately surrendered, and this is only at the border. If we imagine that during martial law in Russia, more than 200,000 people will be mobilized at once, at least 10% of them will immediately surrender. Putin is leading Russia to a large-scale catastrophe. He is out of good scenarios. Whatever he and his associates do, the situation will only get worse, he added. The Russian army is not receiving enough new soldiers to keep up with losses at the front, which are the heaviest since the start of the full-scale invasion in 2022, Bloomberg reported, citing undisclosed sources close to the Kremlin and Russian Defense Ministry. The need to replenish the military reserve became more acute amid Ukraine's incursion in the border areas of Russia's Kursk and Belgorod oblasts. The situation may force Russia to consider a new mobilization, Bloomberg reported, citing two sources who spoke on the condition of anonymity. Officials may present it as a rotation to give the military on the front line a rest, and the draft could be announced by the end of this year, according to the sources. Regional officials are currently unable to meet more than a third of their conscription quotas on average, a person familiar with the situation told the media outlet. In a week of fighting in the Kursk region, Russian troops have failed to stop the advance of the Ukrainian armed forces. The Ukrainian army controls 74 settlements in the Kursk region, said the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine Alexander Swarsky. Over the past 24 hours, our troops have advanced in certain directions from 1 to 3 kilometers, 40 square kilometers have been taken under control, he said on August 13, reporting on the situation at the front to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. A video of the report was published on Zelensky's social networks. According to SYRSKY, fighting is still ongoing along the entire front line. The situation, despite the high intensity of fighting, is under control, he added. In turn, Zelensky spoke about, complex, intense battles, in the Kursk region and the replenishment of the exchange fund for Ukraine. The Ukrainian president noted that inspections and stabilization measures are being carried out in the Russian territories controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces and the development of humanitarian solutions continues for them. In addition, he said that Kiev is preparing the next steps. At the same time, Zelensky said that Ukraine is currently paying special attention to the operation in the Kursk region and the protection of border settlements. The more the Russian military presence is destroyed in the border area, the closer peace and real security will be for our state. The Russian state must answer for what it has done. And it is answering, he added. SYSKY said that the Ukrainian armed forces control about 1,000 square kilometers of the Kursk region, and Zelensky suggested that a Ukrainian offensive on Russian territory could be a catastrophic end to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russia brought war to others, now it is coming home. Ukraine has always wanted only peace, and we will definitely ensure peace, he emphasized. The Ukrainian brigades participating in the operation occupied the city of Sudza, advanced west, went halfway to the city of Lgov to the north, and also organized a large raid to the east in the direction of another regional center, the settlement of Belia. The maximum advance into Russian territory in the northern direction was at least 27 kilometers. The pace of the Ukrainian armed forces advance has slowed, but the command of the Russian armed forces will probably have to transfer additional reserves to the border if it wants to quickly stabilize the situation.
The Ukrainian armed forces managed to pull up rear units, including artillery and drone operators, to the territory of the Kursk region. This allowed the Ukrainian army to continue the offensive. The primary goal is to expand the bridgehead, secure the supply routes of its group and prevent the establishment of interaction between Russian groups in different directions, as well as the delivery of reserves to them. Thus, Russian forces no longer have the ability to hit the rear of the Ukrainian group in the Kursk region with FPV drones, a weapon that is widely used by the troops.